Hello, lovely people. Hope you're doing marvelously well. So here it is, part number four of Show Us Your Studio. This is very, very exciting. This is the last in a four-part series, but I have a very strong feeling we'll be doing many, many more of these. It does take quite a time to edit together, but it's worth it. We don't mind putting in the time and effort because the time and effort you put in. You put in a lot of time and effort to watch the videos and comment and be supportive. So thank you ever so much for being such a wonderful part of this community. So as ever, we've got people from all over the world. Auckland, New Zealand, Tyler, Texas, Massachusetts, Houston, British Columbia, London, England, Kansas, um, North Wales, um, Pennsylvania, Alabama, Minnesota, Kent in England, just all over the world. So thank you ever so much again for being so supportive. Please like and share and let's help grow this community. Of course, leave a bunch of comments and questions. So without further ado, let's watch the video. Happy 2017 and welcome to my new music studio tour. It's a new year, so I thought I'd, you know, get started with a new music studio tour. Lots to get through, so that's me, ralphie.co.nz. The websites that I run is musicstudios.co.nz, which is dedicated to New Zealand music studios. We take tours of their studios. This is my original music. This flighttonight.com, lots of videos. I also have the domain ralphie.co.nz, so R A L P H E. So, this is where I do all of my music. I also have clients coming in as well, recording. We film things, and yeah. It's quite a busy studio now, so we'll get started with synths. I mean, I love my synths. I started off doing techno and all that sort of stuff. I do a bit of everything, rock, pop, but you know, synths uh, have played a big part in my music. Starting off with the Korg Micro X, which I got when it was brand new, and I still really like it. It's basically a mini Triton. Um, the DX200. Um, which has got the nice DX7 sounds. My main sound card is this PreSonus 1818 VSL, which is eight channel, but one channel isn't working. So I've expanded it into a further eight using the Bay Ringer. So basically got 15 channels that I can uh, record simultaneously. My Lexicon MX200, which is a great dual effects rack. Uh, my favorite channel strip is the Universal Audio 6176, which I use a lot on everything because it's got the 1176 compressor, a really nice preamp. I use it for vocals and pretty much everything. I've got the 11 rack, which is for guitar. Uh, got lots of amp simulations, bass simulations as well. But I also use this to run audio out of my secondary laptop. So um, I might be running like a drum machine or something like that, which is uh, run by the machine, uh, drum machine. So I'll get that going and it will come out of this as basically a sound card. The Focusrite Dual Pre, uh, really nice ISA 220 preamps which I use all the time. I really like, I'm a big fan of Focusrite. Universal Audio LA610 Mark II, um, again real big fan of Universal Audio. I use this a lot on bass and all sorts of things as well. Um, this is my patch bay. Everything's, well, most things are patched at the back, and it's just convenient to go from one machine to another using the patch cables. A Focusrite session pack. Um, ISA 2, oh, sorry, this is the ISA 220. This is ISA 2. Sorry, got mixed up earlier. Uh, 220, great. Uh, nice EQ on it. A good channel strip. My tube compressor by Art, which I really like on drums, like drum machines, for example. Um, yeah, that's great. Roland M160 uh, mixer, which is awesome. Uh, basically, I use it as a sub mixer for all my synths and a few other things as well. Like I run my DJ decks on it. Um, what else? My CD tape player goes through that. So, yeah, it's basically a cool sub mixer. Uh, JD990, which is a great um, 90s synth, and it's got the vintage expansion. Uh, card inside. Really good sounds. I feel like I'd never have to buy a Roland synth ever again because it's just got everything I need. Yamaha TX oh, 81Z which is a nice 80s um, synth which is great because I was born in the 80s. It's pretty much my age kind of I think. 
uh, Micro Q synth, which is awesome for trance uh, and um, trance and industrial, all that sort of stuff. Over here is just sort of like a, a few spares. Um, my Roland Mobile Cube, which I use a lot if I go busking or playing somewhere that doesn't have power, so it's battery powered, which is great. Um, at, behind it is a BR600 recorder, which I sometimes take to location, and a Vox ST Lab, Tone Lab. Well, it's quite dark in there. Um, but yeah, it's sort of hiding there. Uh, Pioneer tape deck, which I just play a whole bunch of cassettes. I really like cassettes. Uh, C CD DVD player, use it just for basically running CDs. I do have all sorts of microphones as well, which I've kind of labelled. Um, all sorts, 70, 57, 58, sure. Rode NT1A, by the way, I recommend that as a good starting mic if you can't afford many mics. It's a really good one. Um, good and affordable. Uh, yeah, all sorts of other microphones. Right, so this is a one of my favorites since Mini Nova. I'm, wow, I just really love this synth. Uh, maybe I should do a separate video on the synth alone because it's. I just love so many features about it. Let me know if you'd like that video. Microcorg, which I got for peanuts, um, but it's a really nice. Uh, it's got the MS2000 engine inside. It's cool. Uh, really good PRS electric guitar, which I really love. I basically was gonna buy like a Fender Strat or something like that. Tested it all and end up with this because I really love the bottom end and it's a really nice sounding guitar uh, uh, that's matched well with my Fender amps so yeah that's just what I might I trusted my ears uh, Ludwig kick which is really nice because it's nice and small compact compared to other kits it's got the sound off pads um, there as well so I can hit it and it won't sound as loud an unbranded cymbal which I got really cheap I think I got it for like 40 bucks or something which is awesome it does actually sound quite good hi-hat cymbal uh, which is the new beat hi-hat and a Zildjian uh, cymbal so this recorder is actually my partner's which is awesome and um, I'm really digging vinyl just listening to it watching it turn and um, it's just something about listening to vinyl which is really enjoyable and relaxing. This is a really good um, thrift shop find. This is an orange amp and it sounds amazing um, for what it is. Especially because what I do is I run the 11 rack out and into like this amp for example and there's certain presets that really sing when I do that. Samic amp which I got for free thanks to my buddy Thanks, and um, yeah, he was clearing out his video game room, and he didn't have space for that, and yeah, he just gave it to me. And um, Marshall AS50D, which is, I use this all the time when I play covers gigs, all sorts of acoustic gigs. Um, I love it because I can plug microphone, guitar, and um, yeah, it's a really nice amp. It sounds great. Uh, Fender Super Sonic, this is my tube amp, and it's a great sounding amp. Blue microphone in front of it, and funnily enough, the, one of the main reasons why I wanted this amp is because of the foot switch, which I thought was quite cool. Uh, Rumble 500, great deal on this, which is a Fender bass. It's got XLR out, which is awesome. I do have another bass amp. I started off with this Ashton um, bass amp. And, um, but it doesn't have any XLRs, so yeah, I got the Fender. Um, while I'm in this section, there's my headphones, Audio Technica um, MX50, which is the best headphones in the world, trust me. And um, El Cheapo Sony headphones. Uh, Midex uh, runs all my MIDI synths, syncs them all together, a few miscellaneous items there. Oh, I'll get back to that shortly. This is my pedal board, which is basically set up how it is when I play gigs. Uh, I do sort of one-man one man band shows where I play cover gigs and stuff, and it's just great to have 
all the tools and this I use all the time for fading in, fading out sort of songs which is awesome um, line 6, I do really love this, I actually got a second one of it because I really like it it's basically multi effects and I use it as a tuner as well which is great uh, my looping pedal, awesome um, Workhorse RC300 loop station uh, basically you can loop three things simultaneously and it's just great uh, Voodoo Lab pedal switcher uh, that just stops me from dancing around with my feet and um, trying to switch all sorts of things it does have presets that you can get into haven't explored that quite yet but I just switch effects when I need to at the moment I use the whammy as sort of like a I leave it on the deep detune mode it's sort of like a chorus effect which I use and um, tremolo, ultra tremolo, cheap pedal that I got when I was in Aussie and a Strymon which is delay and I'm a big fan of Strymon pedals over here more pedals okay so um, fake plant, every studio needs one <laughs> um, boss looper uh, this is my second line 6 which I mentioned Strymon reverb, blue sky which is a great reverb love it more, which is a wham, uh, sorry, uh, not whammy, TC Helicon, which is for vocals, Nux, uh, Delay, also for vocals, um, and a Rat uh, Distortion. Trying to go real fast because there's lots to cover, so let's get to it. One of my favorite guitars is a Gretsch Hollow Body. Awesome. Um, I do have a video of me playing this. So yeah, great sounding guitar, right? Okay, Epiphone, which is a nice acoustic. It's actually got the robot tuners. It auto uh, tunes itself and it's got um, custom tunings as well. Um, artist bass, which is a great sounding bass. Um, artists do some cool stuff at affordable prices. Takamine, this is my f uh, first, well one of yeah, actually, my second proper guitar, um, which I used a lot on all my early recordings, um, and a Martin AP5 Mini Mason. Um, I got this guitar because when I was playing gigs in Aussie, I saw lots of musicians using that, and that's actually my favourite guitar. I play that all the time, especially when doing acoustic shows. This is my mic stand thing, uh, which is good. It's got the pop filter and shield and all that. Uh, I'm a big supporter of independent music. So this is all music uh, from independent artists, all signed. So that's cool. Uh, Casio Privia, I bought this to, from, as a birthday present to myself. Um, great. I've always wanted a weighted piano. Um, when I was first learning piano I could never afford one and I only had like a three or four octave one and for years I couldn't afford one and so I decided for one of my birthdays to treat myself so that was awesome nice laptop which runs um, mainly VSTs and machine I use it sort of like as a module and the model is B50 Lenovo, Lenovo I believe uh, this is great. Logitech, wireless keyboard. I can work on stuff wirelessly if required. Machine, which is awesome. Drum machine. The drum sounds on this is awesome. You can get their machine expansions, which I recommend, and it's just a great sounding tool. Um, this is my ribbon um, speaker with the ribbon tweeter. Um, it's a Samson RXA6. Also pre-Sonus. Um, so that's the pre-Sonus five and that's six in terms of size so the Samson is six and I do have a sub for the PreSonus which is great um whoops computers just there we go that's better turned off for a moment um Elisus VI49 this is a recent upgrade because my old MIDI keyboards since I've had since my early teens one of the buttons weren't working anymore so I've decided to upgrade it's cool, it's actually a really cool um, 
weight of feeling to it. And also check out musicstudios.co.nz if I haven't said already. It's a really cool series that we're filming. Um, called Chaos Pad Quad, which is awesome. Effects, um, my Sony smartphone. This headphones splitter thing. Use it all the time when clients come in and really handy. This was bargain of the century. This is a DJM 600. I got this for peanuts because I was at a thrift store and I thought it was broken. Turned out it wasn't. I just had to, basically they thought channel 3 wasn't working. And I just had to get the pin and put it up and it was working. A few knobs were missing so I bought the parts from eBay for cheap. This is my sign that I take out to gigs. Um, Rode microphone Procaster. Uh, microphone which I use for podcasting. It's just really great and um, I also use it for cover videos which I'll show right now. Yep, so cover videos, obviously it's nice because I don't need a pop filter because it's got a built-in pop filter. That's why I use it. Okay, um, Korg KP3 Plus, which is great effects um, looper thing. And I think, have I covered everything? I do believe so. So that's a very brief and very quick run through of my setup. So there you go. Um, this is the creative space. If you're in... Auckland, New Zealand, you can actually um, rent out this room. I help with production. I've had clients that need help with songwriting, so I do that. Um, also had full bands recorded in here. So whatever you whatever you floats your boat, just get in touch with me. And I'm um, sure I'm happy to help. Hi Warren, hi everybody, I'm Peter from Hungary and uh, let me introduce you to my little home studio. I actually have just finished some drum tracking here and uh, my uh, ears are kind of ringing so I think I'm uh, I'm done for today with the noise, but uh, anyway, that's what I got right there. Not much, but great, I would say. Cheers. guys this is my uh, studio setup it's very very minimalistic as you can see there's my sound card it's an emu it's now out of date it's my PC running Cubase Cog Trinity which 
which I very much like actually. Um, I have a mic preamp here that I use. It's not the best, but it's uh, it was given kindly, so so that was pretty nice. Uh, there's my bed. So this is actually a, a working bed studio, and there's the microphone that I use for everything actually. For acoustic guitars, vocals, shakers. Uh, and that's that, that's it. And my my monitors. Absolute twos. I've had those a hundred years. My, my computer. And here, the piece de resistance, my amp, which is an old hi fi amp that I bought for £35 a hundred years ago, too. So, uh, so I am very minimalistic. Hope you like it. Thank you. there this is uh, Craig the Dove uh, with my little studio tour um, there's an amp corner, Cajon, Blackstar Orange, SM57, uh, Les Paul, little thin line telly with P90s, jazz bass then we have monitors etc, Aventone Mix Cubes, KRK Rocket 8s, Marshall Stack obviously everybody needs one of them, Chaotic Eyeball on top there for Vocals, then we come down to the sort of main bit of stuff. We've got this MIDI keyboard, Ableton Push 1, uh, Neve Portico 5017, DI and Mic Pre into Apollo Twin, Fenar Fenar, a big knob from Mackie to control the monitors, etc. The uh, PreSonus Fader Port, Trackball, etc. More monitors, harmonica, bits and pieces, and then my trusty Martin. D28 acoustic. That's it, really. That's all that gets done. Cheers for now. Bye. I'm Mike from Poland and this is my so-called studio setup. As you can see there's not much to talk about but I'll try to introduce you to my very small kind of cozy so-called studio. So well first thing is of course a computer uh, with some dolls installed. Yeah I have a single microphone which is a very cheap thing for like an equivalent of 20 bucks or something. And for some purposes it does its, jo it does its job. Uh, of course, uh, it's nowhere near the professional microphones, but I make do. I I'll try to, um, I just try to think of some ideas uh, uh, on how to use uh, this, this, this cheap bastard. So yeah. I have two uh, two MIDI controllers. One of them is MPK Mini, and the other one is Keystation Mini 32. 
and this one is mostly broken. I mean, the keys, most of the keys aren't working. I use the knobs, I use the pads. Um, this one is working perfectly most of the time. Um, yeah, as for other stuff, I have my guitar, a good old friend, which of course I use to record guitar parts. But also, this is a funny thing, I record bass guitar using this classical guitar. And the idea is, I think of some patterns, I record them on this guitar, and then I use pitch shift on them. And the idea sounds pretty ridiculous, even to me. But for some reason, uh, if, I record it, if I record it right, and, you know, of course, apply a shit ton of effects, it basically kind of works, and it, uh, it 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 works in the mix alone. It kind of sounds it sounds kind of flat but in the mix. It works well enough for me. And well, what else? That's that's pretty much it. Yeah, I have this, this harmonica. I use it sometimes. I have uh, I have a drum set upstairs, but no way to record it. Well, I guess uh, my phone is sometimes a part of, of my setup. I use some, some apps on it to help me record stuff. Yeah, there's uh, hardly any equipment here. There's mostly... Uh, I'll try to to use my, uh, use my mind to get to most of this uh, ridiculously poor setup. Yeah, so, well, I guess that's it. Um, see you. Hi, my name is Chaba Zambori, and I would like to show you my home studio setup. This video will be really short because my studio setup is pretty simple. I have a microphone and an interface and it's connected. And of course, uh, I have a dough. That's all. Rode NT1A. This is my number one microphone. I have some others, but I use this one the most. It sounds natural. Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 interface. This is the old version. Now you can get the new one. It's pretty, pretty cheap. Two input, two mics or two instruments. And this is enough for me. I'm using a Studio One software. In my work, I'm trying to focus what's in front of the microphone. Thanks for watching and hope you see you next time. See ya. Hi everyone, my name is Claude, I'm from Cape Town, South Africa. Um, this is my studio setup. I run a MacBook Pro 13 inch 2011 with Ableton Live 8. Audio interface I use is a Focusrite Sapphire Pro 24. The monitors I've got are Elisa's MK2s. I've got a small Fender Champ reissue amp, some pedals. I've got a Ferg OM23 acoustic guitar. And electric I use is a Napafone dot hollow body guitar mics that I've got are Rode M5 that are used for recording acoustic guitar sometimes vocals as well I think it's M57 that's pretty much it How you doing? I've been expecting you. Welcome to my home studio. 
I'm Lauren Mulrain. This is my studio called The Red Room. It's built in a spare bedroom in my home just outside of Nashville, Tennessee. I wanted to give you a quick tour today, show you what I have here and how we go about our process. So my background is I'm a singer, songwriter, producer. I've got The Red Room. I've got my record company, 1021 Entertainment, 1021 Records. And I build everything around songs. So you'll see that my system is not built around a mixing console, but it's built around a keyboard. My 88 key controller runs through my Sapphire Pro 40 interface and preamp, which then records into my iMac. My iMac uses, my, my preferred DAW of choice is Logic Pro 10. I also have Pro Tools, but I like to use Logic for my writing and production and arranging specifically. And uh, that's where I get most of my electronic sounds from Logic. But I also have some Spectrosonics units. Love the Spectrosonics works. Um, Omnisphere 2, Trillion, outstanding bass sounds. And then I also always include live sounds in my recordings because that just gives it life. It just brings it, brings it all together when you use live instruments. So you'll see over here I've got my guitar rack. do a lot of guitar work with my Martin electric acoustic here. And then I also do some with my Takamini. If I'm doing electric guitar, I typically use my Paul Reed Smith right here. Beautiful guitar, great sound, great versatility. And then bass guitar, when I'm doing live bass, I use my Fender Squire Jaguar bass. I also have a little travel guitar, Martin, here, which is basically for noodling around some songwriting things, but I don't really record with that. Most of my recording, especially with electric, goes direct. But I also have the option of going using my amplifier got a Roland JC40 amp here, mic'd with a Shure SM57, and that will go into the system and I could record that way. I also have a TC Electronics effects unit, which has some great guitar effects that I use for my guitar. So in addition to that, um, my monitors of choice are Focal. I upgraded to the Focal monitors this summer, love them, and also upgraded the computer this summer as well. I have a Warm Audio WA76 compressor, which is just outstanding. Can't say anything bad about it at all. I also have the Pro Tools. I don't, don't use Pro Tools much, but I do have that just for accessibility to um, other studios. My main microphone is the Neumann TLM-103. Outstanding microphone for vocals. I use the SE Electronics reflection filter to block any bounce back of sounds or outside stray sounds. And then on the walls, I've, I've treated the walls with uh, wall treatment as well, which helps to keep the room in the proper recording environment. This room really gives me just a great vocal sound. Uh, my last project, Father Forgiven, was re recorded all here. Love the vocal sounds, acoustic guitar sounds, just a great room for that. So everything is, is just exactly what I need to work for my workflow. And um, I'm just excited about being part of this, this revolution of home recording. You create it at home, you, you put it out into the world, you don't have to worry about the middleman, don't have to worry about the major labels. If you want to, you can, but you don't have to. And I'm just glad, glad to be a part of that. So hopefully we can work together sometime. Lauren Mulrain, The Red Room, 1021 Entertainment, Nashville, Tennessee. What's up, Warren? It's Jay here from Diesel Dungeon Studio in Windsor, Ontario, Canada. Love all the stuff. Love the content. Please, please keep it up. Thank you so much. Come on into my place. It's all a one-room studio. Approximately 35 feet in depth and 12 feet wide. Um, it's got uh, absorption all the way around on the walls that I built myself as well as diffusion. These are super chunks in the back corners here. We've got absorption all in the ceiling that I built myself all using Owens Corning 703. Here's a panorama coming down the sides here. We also have super chunks on these back corners and we have panels on either side. Thicker ones in behind here. Uh, stra also straddling up there and some more bass traps straddling the floor because that's still a corner um, Here's the main control area using a Mac as our machine here 27 inch with a 47 inch flat screen there uh, for editing um, And we're using a two control surfaces just uh, some Behringer ones actually, but uh, Had a, a nice little wood uh, enclosure built to give it a little bit of a vintage feel uh, they're all just through MIDI, Baby Huey. Um, Mackie Big Knob here, using some M-Audio speakers with a sub that I can turn on or off down under there. 
and I've got NS10s as well as um, a mono or tone, a couple of computer speakers, and then some bigger um, JBLs in the back as midfields uh, with a home theater sub hooked up to them. Um, there is an SSL style compressor here by Chameleon Labs using an Echo interface. Uh, I actually have a Thunderbolt right behind me that I'm about to plug in from, um, it's the new uh, Motu 16A. Um, Art VLA 2. Uh, these are some Golden Age uh, projects, 1073 style pre's. 8 channel Personas, the older style Personas with a really cool saturation knob on every pre. Tube preamp from uh, ART. Some Mackie pre's that I use as extra stuff for room mics and that. Onyx pre's that I can just patch in via line outs into the patch bay. Um, some API style warm preamps. Got to have the keyboard with the whiteboard, of course, and got to have the lava lamp. Uh, here is power amps and things like that. Here's a little bit more outboard. Got some warm stuff. Um, that radial was an idea that I got from Bob Horn. Awesome stuff. It was in your video. Oh, Warren. You see that, Warren? Morant 7720 stereophonic receiver. That's powering the JBLs all the way. Warren, you also talked about this in one of your videos, the Ashley SC50 compressor. It is amazing on snare drum. Try it. And, uh, of course, Symmetric's um, awesome on bass, uh, the 501. A um, couple other EQs, another really old Ashley EQ, amazing on kick in, of course, DBX160. And um, just going down the room here, here's this side wall, a little bit of seating, got some headphones, a couple extra mic stands, a lot of them are in use right now in the drum kit. The overheads are not set up currently, I need to, just got them out of the way, I was doing some cleaning. <laughs> but uh, I have a Birch Tama kit here. Awesome for recording, a couple extra shells and storage, plenty of saving symbols to select from and storage. Um, had a nice LED sign made for me very, very cheaply. Case of beer, in fact. There's the snake that runs over to the control area. Uh, got a Yamaha um, Fender Stratocaster style, uh, Fat Strat style guitar. Um, just in case people don't have a Strat and we need that kind of a sound. Uh, a wonderful Siegel six string acoustic uh, and an amazing, amazing, used on tons of tunes that I've done here, Univox P bass style um, bass and it is from the 70s and it sounds great. You need to have a big muff of course, an Ignator tube head, uh, just 20 watts but that's, you can, it's variable so that's all I need for in here. Um, a Randall 412 cab with uh, some vintage 30s as well as G1275 s and I can alternate between the two uh, styles of speakers. This actually sounds really cool on bass guitar if you like a mid-rangey, vintage -y tone, P bass all the way. Um, run that with the DI, get your low end from the DI, sounds great. Uh, piano organ from the 1960s, um, a lot of the keys are starting to lose their air but uh, all these still work and it's awesome for adding a little cheap vintage pad or something to some guitars uh, this is Mike land a little Mike locker area here um, plenty of stuff to choose from there and um, I'm just gonna take you around here really quick uh, since it's all one room sometimes it's nice to have guitars out here so I can mic them and actually hear them on the monitors so this door is soundproof it's a steel door, uh, came in a frame from Home Depot. I installed it um, and this is a sheet of drywall here with uh, green glue in between um, to add some extra soundproofing with some foam. Uh, this whole wall was actually put up separating uh, off the room from the rest of the basement with some soundproofing inside the walls, soundproofing in the ceiling so the wifey and the kid so we don't hear each other when we're making noise down here. And then I will bring mics out here and kind of toss them right in this hallway here and catch uh, the live sound of this room that we have out here that I just finished myself as well. Uh, it was a complete gut job. Um, this is in the basement, by the way, I'm sure you probably can tell. I want to put a patch panel there so I can um, bring some mics in here easier without running the cables under the door. But anyways, that is my setup. Thank you ever so much for watching. 
Warren, please keep up the great work. Have a marvelous time recording and mixing. Have a good night. Hey everyone, it's Mick from Rome, Italy. Um, I'm 16 years old and this is my bedroom. So uh, here's the bed. Um, it's a super small space and I have a pretty basic setup. I have this 21 inches iMac, the Yamaha is HS7, I have the Scarlet 2i4, then I have this uh, quite an expensive USB keyboard that I use for um, playing virtual instruments, that kind of stuff. I have these um, AKG's headphones and and the best bit of the studio, which is uh, this uh, 25 euros dynamic mic that I use for everything, I guess, because it's my only mic. And um, it, it really sucks, you know, <laughs> it's, it's not that good, but you know, it's, it's, it's the best that I, that I can have at the moment, that, that I can afford. And at the end of the day, it, it does the job well, because um, I'm more of a singer, songwriter, rather than a producer or engineer. So uh, I need a space where I feel comfortable so that I can make the best music I can and what a better environment than my bedroom. So you know, I, I, I track, I compose, I, I do all that kind of stuff here. And it seems to uh, work pretty well. Uh, so that's about it and thank you very much for watching. Hey Warren, hey all you producers that are producing like professionals. Actually, if you're producing like a pro, then you're producing way better than I am. Hey, let's have a uh, quick rundown of the studio. Oh, by the way, I'm Chad. I'm in Kansas City, Missouri. Total amateur, uh, just do this for fun. So let's have a look around. All right, first let's get to the, uh, the heart and soul of the operation. Uh, got my interface, which is an RME Fireface UCX, uh, and he's uh, connected via ADAT to the Behringer ADA 8200. 16 channels in, 16 channels out, pretty cool. Uh, some uh, patch bays, fun stuff there. Uh, computer, which does all the heavy lifting. Uh, I, you know, I've put it together myself, uh, Intel i7 4770K. What all we got here? Uh, uh, the uh, Personas uh, fader port, which I like a whole lot. I use it all the time. Uh, I got a few compressors here that I like a whole lot. I uh, really couldn't live without them. Monitors, I'm using Yamaha HS80M. Now, Warren, also, I need to talk to you about this because I saw you using one of these BAE 1073s for a long time. Lusted over them. I actually finally bought one. 
very expensive, but holy cow, do I love it. I love it a whole lot. Uh, the rest of these are just uh, crappy things that I don't even have plugged in. Uh, they're there because they're cheaper than buying blanks for my rack. All right, uh, cheap little EMU uh, MIDI controller. Of course, my Fallout bobblehead, like it. Uh, microphones, uh, oh, I got several in there. My, my main vocal mic is an Aventone um, CV12. Uh, other than that, I, I use uh, SM57s, SM81s, uh, an i5, a D6, uh, probably another couple that I'm forgetting. Uh, Frankenstein, everybody say hi. Hi, Frankie. Uh, we got, uh, this is an actual vintage, all original, 65 Jazzmaster. Uh, one of the uh, crowning jewels <laughs> of my studio here. Uh, play it through a, a 68 Deluxe Reverb reissue. Uh, that I like a whole lot. I got a, uh, this is a 86 Marshall JCM 800 uh, 2204S, which is a small box. Actually sits on top of a 4x10 instead of a 4x12. Uh, lots of fun pedals. You can, you know, they're there. There they are. A uh, Mesa Lone Star Special that I actually don't use a whole lot anymore, but uh, I'm gonna have to get back in the swing of things with that thing. Uh, a few guitars here, I got a Martin D41, uh, a 98 uh, Les Paul Classic, a uh, probably 2014 Telecaster, uh, American Deluxe. Um, <laughs> the old the old uh, 1984, this is one of my very, very first guitars, uh, the uh, 1984 Aria Pro 2 RS Inazuma. Got a Made in Mexico P-Bass, I uh, can't really see these when they're all crammed in together. And a uh, recent um, Squire J bass kind of thing. All right, all right. Uh, I'm new to playing drums, but I actually added a uh, drum kit to the room. Uh, it's a Yamaha Stage Custom. Uh, it, it's, it's really, uh, to me it sounds great, but uh, I don't know a whole lot about acoustic drums yet, but uh, maybe anything would sound great. Uh, what else have I got here? Oh yeah, all the uh, acoustic treatments, um, other than the obvious Orlex up at the top there, but acoustic treatments are all GIK acoustics. They're monster traps, they're fold-out screens, they're uh, more monster traps, and the Cloud is a couple of their, I think they call them 242 or 244, I can't remember. But yeah, yeah, got their big soffit traps in the corner with the tri-traps above them. Uh, lots of trapping in here, and it's not nearly enough. I need way more. But all right, that's the, uh, that's the quick tour. Uh, you know, I really love doing this. Uh, like I say, I'm just total amateur. I just do it for um, the, the pure love of it. Uh, you know, some guys play golf, some guys, you know, ride motorcycles and build old cars, but this is, this is what I do. It's what I do with my free time. So thank you very much. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the quick, very quick look around. And uh, thanks, for, uh, thanks for having us on here, Warren. All right, hey everybody, have a good one. Hey guys, uh, this is Peter here. It's my uh, studio in my house in Cerritos called The Oven Studios. And I'm gonna walk you through the gear real quick. I'm not gonna try to make it long. So first we start off with my guitar. It's my acoustic guitar. It's an acoustic, uh, it's a Martin custom shop. Kind of like a half jumbo. I think it's called HJ. It's a HJ38. Um, it's a beautiful acoustic guitar and everyone loves playing this one. It's like kind of like my prize baby. and written you know people just love playing it for every genre uh we go to the guitar lele it's a small one i just you know it's my buddies that i'm borrowing from um and a gibson es390 this is like a hollow body smaller smaller version of a hollow the 330 hollow body and i put lawler pickups on and it sounds amazing this is a fender strat that i got inspired by john mayer and stevie ray vaughn that i built myself I uh, got these, you know, authentic Scheller tuners and put original 1963 Stratocaster pots, actually, and they sound amazing. And then next is my 52 Tele reissue. It's a Wildwood thin skin version. And then a Gibson uh, SG Standard in black that I have it in to detuning, so it sounds a whole step lower. And a classical guitar, I don't even play it. And got some headphones and this uh, stereo pair of my buddies, in, you know, endorsed by Samson. So they give me a couple mics to try out and keep and, or I mean, try out and sounds pretty great. 
Next is the keyboards. I have a Kurzweil 2500XS, XS, the K series, and this is my buddy, my producer friend that let me let me take it because he has a lot of keyboards and use it for a couple patches. The string patches are amazing on this thing, by the way. So, and a Radium M Audio is like the 49 key one that's hooked up their USB cable to my computer for like MIDI stuff and you know contact. And stuff like that and we go to this rack it's my uh power supply or my power conditioner uh monster pro 3500 and then underneath that is my converter it's the apogee symphony this thing sounds freaking amazing i upgraded it from ua apollo and it's like on a next class kind of converters um basically i have 24 inputs and eight outputs i don't need a lot because i'm going to digital out into the grace design m905 this thing's on amazing too and you can literally hear everything that you have it's kind of like somebody took off like a blanket on front of your speakers and just went like that and that's what the m905 sounds like underneath that it's my behringer uh power play pro 8 it's basically my headphone you know it's kind of like my headphone splitters it's not like a headphone box where you can kind of sum you know kick drums you know bass and stuff but it's basically everyone gets the same mix, but you get to control. Everyone has, you know, there's eight outputs into it. And underneath that is my Yamaha P2350. It's the uh, power amp for my Aura Tones, which is sits right here. Uh, the reason why they're not spaced is because I literally listen to them for vocal rides and, you know, just kind of like level checking. I don't need to check, um, you know panning or whatnot because i have um because i use the K krk exposés the e8ts i actually got this from ron fair um a couple years back it was in literally pristine condition and i got it for like a steal sounds amazing pensado turned me on to this i'm sure everyone knows these speakers because of pensado's place and this is the controller for the grace design m905 it's really cool because you get like eight different sources and I can have like a computer playing when I click this and listen to a mix and then when I want Pro Tools I can switch back to this really fast and kind of like compare side by side. You get three monitor cho choices, obviously my second monitor is off at the moment. Um, you get dim, mute, mono, sub mute, I don't have a sub, talk back, and monitor to cue which allows me to <clears throat> feed everyone that signal through there. And the artist mix for faders and <clears throat> Kensington trackball. So for this track, it's kind of like where all my mic pre's and compressors are stored. We start with the uh, Summit Audio TLA 100A. This is an amazing thing, amazing compressor. I put a Telefunk and Tobi X7 in and it just went to a next level. And then I have a pair of uh, BAE 1073. It's just kind of like the Neve. It's not much explaining to do on this one. Um, and then have the uh, UA 6176, but I have it split. So basically my first channel of 1073 is linked to this. And my second channel is linked to the 1176. And I have a uh, 4710 that Dave Way actually gave to me. Um, sounds amazing. It can go from like really clean to kind of like very colored. And underneath that, I got the focus right. I just got this. It's the newest um, mic pre I picked up. And I would have to say this is probably the most underrated mic pre I've ever seen in my life. It's really clean and it sounds really, really good. And you can get a lot of cool sounds from all these impedance switches. You go from like 110, medium, high to low. You can get a lot of tonal different, you know, combination from this. Underneath that is the mic pre for those that keyboard over there. I don't need anything crazy, so I kind of have this and just decided to hook it up. And then underneath that, the last one is the Dizengoff D4. It's basically their play off of a Telefunken, you know, V72, kind of like a, you know, the Beatles mic pre kind of thing like that. And it sounds really good and it's really cheap and they're made out of Chicago and they're really high quality parts. And this is a snake I have. Basically, it's wrapped up, but it's a 50-foot snake. And I usually bring this out into the live room when we track drums and stuff. Not live room, my living room, which is the live room. And I got a couple mics in here. I got a piano. This is my mom's 30-year-old German piano that she got when she was a kid. 
and this is uh, Audio Technica 4038. It's a pencil mic. I just did like a guitar lele tracking session. So I have the Vanguard V13, which all you guys should get. That saw on Dave Way's video. I I saw them on. I found them basically on Instagram and kind of decided to. I have a pair, by the way, and kind of decided to just kind of get it because they looked really cool. And upon trying it, I literally said one word through the 1073 and i was like holy crap this is a really good mic and yeah so this is kind of like my home studio i have a lot more stuff but it'll take forever explaining everything but yeah and there's my second monitors basically those are kind of like my computer they're kind of like hi-fi speakers that you know i i, I kind of reference off of i mainly mix on the kr case because i really know how they sound and i really love how it sounds in this room so I kind of don't need a second alternative monitor, but they're sitting there for now. I don't need it. So yeah, this is my home studio. This is called Oven Studios in California. Thank you for being an incredibly important part of this community. Thank you for the wonderful support you give each other. And of course, please leave a bunch of comments and questions below. Share, like, and have a marvelous time recording and mixing.